Hi, Andrew. Am I audible? Yes, sir. Hi. Okay. Uh, let me start recording first. So it's going to start. Uh, please confirm whether my screen is visible. Is it visible? Oh. Yes, sir. Wait. Okay. Yeah. Are my slides visible to you? Is it uh, okay? So let's start this meeting. Hmm. So welcome everyone to the week eight. Now we are uh, discussing the motor proteins and metalloproteins. So this section is very much important with respect to the cell biology, biochemistry, and in many more aspects. So here, what you will, uh, what you might have studied that regarding what are the roles of the metals in proteins and how the cytoskeleton filaments work, right? You might have studied the nucleic acid motor proteins, then about the dynein, kinesine, and myosin. At the end of the this problem solving uh, session, I will also show you some very, uh, very like uh, eye catching animations regarding to this. The how the cargo is being transported from uh, like periphery of the cells to the center or from center to the cell of periphery and how the cell divides. So the, these all animations I will show you to give you a very clear understanding of what MEM was teaching in the week eight. And how this dynein kinesin move along the uh, motor like uh, the cytoskeleton filaments and how the cell divides. Uh, because of those actions. Then uh, uh, O2 binding and all that also you might have studied and then you studied the like O2 loading and then that in the previous uh, modules also. So the contents of this PPT will be as what it was, the, the structure will be as the same what it was in the previous sessions also, such as for a, first I will discuss the practice question some sample problem, then discussion on the important topics and some scope of this model with research perspective by showing some research animation that have been made in like across the world uh, by different different scientific community. So let's first discuss the problems. Your first problem is which statement is correct about the motor proteins? Option A, kinesin exhibits a strong binding with the microtubules in an ATP bound state. Option B is kinesin exhibit a strong binding with the actin filament in an ATP bound state, or kinesin exhibit weak binding with microtubule in ATP bound state, or option D, kinesin exhibit weak binding with the actin filament in an ATP bound state. So before answering this question, please tell me uh, kinesin belongs to which motor protein class and uh, to which uh, it binds? Is it binding with microtubule or with actin filament? Any views on this? Who all are online? Andrea, any views on this? Microtubule. Uh, microtubule. Microtubules are the kind of uh, uh, so it is okay. So what kind of binding mode it is? Is it a, in the ATP bound state is stroke binding or in the ATP like uh, so what option do you think out of four? In ATP bound state, is weak binding or a strong binding? So you have already disqualified the option B and option D. Like it is not binding to the actin filament. That means B and T is not correct. So uh, moving ahead, what kind of binding will it have if it is ATP bound state? Will it be strong or weak? Your correct option is option A. Uh, kinesin is a motor. Uh, kinesin is a motor protein, and it 
move along on the microtubules, which is made up of the alpha tubulin and beta tubulin pol polymer of the alpha alpha beta tubulins, right? So then, if ATP bound state is there, then it will have the strong binding with microtubule. So option A is correct in this question. Your second question is microtubules, motor protein, and actin filament are all part of uh, what is the correct among these four. Option A is rough ER in prokaryotic cell. Option B, the mechanism of photosynthesis that occurs in chloroplast. Option C, the cytoskeleton of, of eukaryotic cells. Or option D, the process that moves the small molecule across the membrane, across the cell membrane. What do you think about this question? Is it the cytoskeleton? Cytoskeleton of eukaryotic cell. Yes, you are right. Uh, the correct option is C. Why it is? Because in prokaryotic cell, you uh, will you see the rough here? What is the difference between prokaryotic and eukaryotic cells? Uh, prokaryotic cells will not have well-defined uh, organelles like you Yeah, well-defined organelles. And they are unicellular. Most of the case, they are unicellular, right? Yes. Prokaryotic cell. And they don't have the well-defined organelle uh, inside the cell. So that is why the uh, first, obvious, first option is obviously incorrect. The second option, which is given as the, the mechanism of photosynthesis. Uh, we don't think that photosynthesis is the, like these all filaments occurs in the photosynthesis. But however, it does have the uh, the eukaryotic cells in the eukaryotic cell. Is, these all are the part of the cytoskeleton. Option D is incorrect because these all are not transporting the molecules across a cell membrane. However, they they do the transport. If it was the intercellular or in cell inside the cell, then this option might be correct. But here, the, it is saying that this is transporting across the cell membrane. Across the cell membrane, those are the transport proteins and other channels and all, right? So that is why option D is incorrect. Option C is correct, the cytoskeleton part of the eukaryotic cells. Now, your Third question is, which statement is or are about the microtubules is correct? Op uh, statement one is, tubulin, di tubulin dimer polymerized to form the microtubules. Statement two, consists of a approximately 13 linear protofilaments assembled around a hollow core. Or statement three, the microtubules are non-polar structure. So what is the correct answer for this question your options option a is one and two statement is correct option b is one two and three all three are correct option c two and three is correct and option d one and two only are correct options so what do you think about it which of the three statement is correct one is correct. Uh, three is uh, not correct. Mm -hmm. Very good. Because they they transport the cargo to the like uh, positive end and negative end, right? Yeah. Microtubules does have the uh, like polar structure. Polar yes. structure in sense of the sign of it. Uh, what does that positive end and negative end signifies? In microtubule structure, what does the positive and negative end signifies? Why polarity appears? Because positive end is fast growing cell, a uh, fast growing end. Because uh, in that that end is under the uh, like under the construction of more rapid speed. However, the negative is uh, negative end is slow growing uh, slow growing end. And uh, that is almost the origin that from there it, it starts. And why it does not, uh, a, why does not the negative end is fast growing? That uh, will be explained in the animation that I will show you in the end of this problem solving session. So here your correct statements are tubulin is obviously a dimer, a dimer a tubulin dimers polymerize and to form a macro tubules. This is a correct statement. Option 
थर्ड स्टेटमेंट इज इन करेक्ट हाउ एवर द कंसिस्ट ऑफ द थर्टीन प्रोटोफ्लामेट असेंबल अराउंड दोर दिस इज ए करेक्ट स्टेटमेंट सो ऑप्शन स्टेटमेंट वन एंड स्टेटमेंट टू आर करेक्ट दैट इज वाई द ऑप्शन ए इज करेक्ट फॉर दिस क्वेश्चन नाउ योर नेक्स्ट क्वेश्चन इज इन डिओक्सी हिमोग्लोबिन एच पी द फेरस टू प्लस स्टेट इज फाइव कोऑर्डिनेटेड टू how many uh, like which is the correct option for this the four nitrogen of a heme two an o2 molecule or two nitrogens of the heme and two three histidine residue in hemoglobin four nitrogen of heme to a water molecule or four nitrogen of a heme to the proximal histidine of hemoglobin what is the correct statement correct answer for this question number 4 in the deoxy state when the oxygen is not bound in the hemoglobin where the fe2 will be coordinated to is it d very good the correct answer is d why because it is in the deoxy state so obviously the oxygen molecule is not there right and the option a is incorrect now that uh, the correct answer for this is the four nitrogen of e and to the proximal histidine of the hemoglobin very good coming to the next question the basis of malfunction of hemoglobin mass a uh, molecule in sickle cell anemia is option a insufficient iron in the diet substitution of single amino acid Op option c reduced affinity for oxygen or option d incorrect secondary structure first tell me uh, what happens during the sickle cell anemia can you uh, recall what happens in sickle cell anemia there is a point mutation in mm -hmm. the beta globulin chain yes so and uh, so it like from glutamic acid it will become uh, valine okay very good and, and what does it cause the structure of the uh, like, hemoglobin will change yeah yeah the structure of hemoglobin will not be properly folded and then uh, the that causes the like red blood cells to not form a proper shape so that the oxygen does not bind that because because of that the malfunction because of that malfunction the oxygen is does not transport efficiently to the another uh, from lungs to another part of the cell right so the correct option here is substitution of a single amino acid right yes okay very good now the next question is in the following conversion reaction uh, where the glucose uh, sorry uh, yeah where the glucose is converting to glucose 6 phosphate okay in the following conversion reaction the role of a dash ion is the shield of negative charge on the phosphate group of dash which allows the enzyme to properly function so what are a and b in this a is proton or b is adp option b is a is mg2 plus ion and b is adp option c a is h plus and b is atp option d a is mg2 plus and b is atp what is the correct uh, answer for this mg2 plus and ATP. Very good. Yes, because uh, the the if you closely look the equation itself, that is the trans. Uh, it is happening like for in the forward direction when glucose is converting into the glucose glucose six phosphate. That means addition of phosphate group, right? So in case of the addition of phosphate group, it must have the it it must react with the ATP, right? from there only the phosphate will transfer to the glucose and then glucose 6 phosphate will be made so the phosphate groups will be transferred from the atp and the role that, that plays in the like in the active active core of the uh, like uh, this enzyme which is hexokinase right or glucokinase both in both of them the mg2 plus ion plays a important role 
that seals the negative charge of the phosphate group from of ATP and allows the pro enzyme to properly function that converts the glucose to glucose 6 phosphate. The correct answer is D. Okay, very good. Now coming to the next question. Choose the odd one from the following metalloproteins. Which uh, odd one means to disqualify one option which is not in the case of all three, all three other than that three. Okay, so your options are hemoglobin, myoglobin, ferritin, and hemocyanin. Which one is the odd one in this? It's ferritin. Ferritin? No, no, no. Uh, see, hemocyanin. Hemocyanin. Yeah, because Are all you three sure? will have iron, but this will not have iron. Okay. So here, hemoglobin, myoglobin, hemocyanin, all three will have iron, but ferritin will not have the iron. It will have more than one iron, I guess. So the option C is incorrect, actually. The odd one is ferritin. Okay. Uh, hemocyanin okay. is, is also iron, is it? Yeah, hemocyanin is also iron. Okay, okay. Yeah, so uh, now this is a like a numerical question, very simple one. So when partial pressure of oxygen is 10 times of partial, uh, it's 50% uh, binding site of myoglobin, the fractional saturation of IO2 is about how much? So can you rapidly calculate or give me the formula? To calculate this, what is the fractional saturation? How to solve this question? Yes. What is the formula for partial pressure of oxygen? PO2. I am not sure. Sir. Okay. No problem. This is partial, uh, to calculate the partial pressure of oxygen. That is the PO2 is equal to Y of O2. Okay. Y of O2 means fractional saturation of O2 into multiplied by the 50% saturation limit, which is P50 divided by 1 minus YO2. Now you have given the P partial pressure of O2 is equal to 10 times of that 50%, right? So that means 10 times 10 into P of P50, right? 10 into P50 is equal to uh, YO2. YO2 you need to calculate into P50 divided by 1 minus YO2. Now can you rapidly calculate it? What will be the? Now you know. Uh, now from this conversion, you can calculate the PO2. Uh, y of O2. Can you rapidly calculate and tell me the answer? Here. Uh, here. The P50, P50 will cancel out. Then 10 equal to Y of O2 divided by 1 minus Y of O2. Right. Then this will imply this will imply that uh, the 10 minus 10 of Y O2 is equal to Y O2. So that means Y O2 will be. 9YO2 will be equal to 10. Uh, uh, sorry, sorry. 9 by YO2 will be 10. So that means YO2 is equal to. Sorry, sorry, sorry. Okay. Let me calculate here, right? 10 is equal, 10 equal to YO2 divided by 1 minus YO2. That means 10 minus 10 of uh, 10 minus 10 of YO2 is equal to. Y O2, right? Yes. So that means 10 equal to 9 of Y O2. And Y O2 will give you total 0 0.9, right? Yes. Uh, right. So your option B is correct. Now the next question is 
let me uh, this card and then yeah. OK, so. Your ninth question is. Your ninth question is the death in histidine that, that as that is attached to the of uh, iron in the hemoglobin is connected to this helix while the death histidine is connected to the death of helix. So your options are one is proximal, two is F, then third is distal or E, then distal F, proximal E. What is the correct option in this question? Can you, uh, can you recall the structure of hemoglobin? How the ferrous is arranged uh, in the cell, uh, like in the hemoglobin structure? Here, uh, any idea about it? Do you remember? Not sure, sir. Okay, no problem. So, in case of uh, hemoglobin, the proximal histidine, which is attached to the F helix, okay, so second will be the F helix, and while the distal histidine will be connected to the E helix. So, your option A is correct. Okay, this was a factual question actually. Now the next question here, the active site of a metal, the active site of uh, which metalloprotein is shown here? Can you identify which of this metalloprotein? Is it lactate dehydrogenase, genthene oxidase, carbonic anhydrase or superoxide dismutase? This you might have uh, seen in the previous module also. Carbonic anhydrase. Very good. This is carbonic anhydrase in which zinc ion ZN2 plus is coordinated to. Uh, this is uh, this is bounded by the histidine 96, histidine 94, and histidine 119, and. Uh, the another ZN2 plus ion, it will stabilize the water molecule and it and this is how this ZN2 plus ion coordinate the active site and forms the uh, like make the active site uh, catalytically active. OK, so this is the structure of carbonic anhydrase. Now the next question is which of the which among the following statement is or are correct about the hemocyanin? It is copper containing protein involving the oxygen transport or oxy form of the colorless and deoxy form is blue. Copper ions are the plus two oxidation state in the deoxy form and plus one in the oxy form. It is found in the orthopodus as molluscus. Hemocyanin contains both ferrous and copper. OK. So now can you answer it? What which of the statement is correct? One is correct and two is okay. not correct. Oxyform is colorless and deoxyform is blue. OK, then what about the three and four? It, uh, is it found in the orthopodus and mollusca? Yes, it is uh, found. Okay. And uh, what about third? Is it wrong? So if 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 you understand that uh, option four is correct, option second is correct, option second. Option first and second is correct, then uh, there is no option like that, right? Two is not correct. Blue is. Yes, uh, blue is the, in the oxy form. Yeah. 
blue is oxyform and deoxyform is colorless right so option d is correct here which is first and fourth statement is correct the copper containing protein involved the, uh, this is hemocyanin contains copper and this is involved in the oxygen transport then if these are found in orthopodes and molluscus and uh, this uh, copper to ion copper to plus oxidation state is a deoxyform and plus one is oxygen this is incorrect statement so your correct answer is option d now coming to the next question the ability of dynein to move towards the microtubule follows enterograde retrograde active transport or passive transport uh, first tell me what are active and passive transport active i think it involves the uh, utilization of atp yes atp uh, hydrolysis yeah, very good passive it is not uh, involved mm -hmm. passive it is not needed it will use the some other form of energy right okay. it will not use the atp hydrolysis so uh, the ability of dynein to move towards the microtubule uh, and tell me also uh, the dynein uh, dynein follows which direction is it following the positive end or negative end of the microtubule in which direction it it moves so by that only you will be able to understand whether it is entero grade or retro grade it is uh, like negative end only negative end very good so will it be entero grade or uh, retro grade entero grade Dynein is actually a retrograde transport. Retrograde means that is following the negative end of the uh, end. It uh, regarding to the active and transport, uh, active and passive transport, we cannot say anything about it. Okay, so the ability of dynein to move towards the macrotubules follows the retrograde transport. The option B here in the in this question is correct. Okay, now the next question is RNA polymerase. Uh, RNA polymerase in each involved in transcription is it correct statement or false statement? What is the function of RNA polymerase? What is the function of DNA polymerase? It synthesizes DNA, new strand of DNA. Means replication, right? Yeah. So, what is the applic? Uh, uh, what does the RNA polymerase do? It will synthesize RNA. It synthesizes RNA, and what uh, from DNA, right? From DNA yeah. template to RNA, it is synthesizing. And what does that process is called? From DNA to RNA. It's transcription only. Transcription and uh, RNA to protein. Ah, uh, translation. Very good. So, and that is what called the central dogma, right? So, from DNA to RNA, it is transcription. and from rna to protein it is translation so this statement is talking about and this is catalyzed by from dna to rna this is catalyzed by the rna polymerase right and this process is called transcription that is why this statement is correct true statement right so option a now the next question is uh, arginase is a dis containing enzyme which uh, metalloprotein it is and which catalyzes the final step of dash cycle so where does you uh, where do you see the arginase in which path of the in which uh, pathway which cycle it do, do you see arginase and what metal it contains so is it manganese or it is found in and it is found in urea cycle or magnesium in urea cycle or manganese in tca tricarboxylic acid cycle or magnesium tricarboxylic acid cycle what is the correct statement a a very good arginase contains manganese and it is found in the urea cycle and which is the last step of the urea cycle now your next question is atp synthesis by atp synthase is driven by proton movement nadh movement or electron movement so your options are of statement 3 is correct is statement 2 is correct 1 2 3 all are correct or statement 1 is only correct 
how the atp synthesize uh, synthesize atp proton movement proton movement is correct very good then does it involve nadh movement or electron movement Does it involve? No. So only statement one is correct. So here option D is correct here, which is only ATP synthesis requires the it transport from uh, lower gradient, uh, higher gradient to lower gradient, and in that sense, the side that rotates and ADP is converted to ATP. that is how the atp is being synthesized right so option t is correct now your next question is which of the following is or a false about the dna topo isomerase so where do you find the dna topo isomerase can you recall what is the role of dna topo isomerase it will uh, reduce the strain while unwinding yes uh, uh, like uh, while unwinding it will reduce the strain and how does it do that by cutting the strands right yes okay so in that sense Uh, the options are given here like statement three statements are given here it really it releases the strain caused by unwinding the dna of heli, uh, dna by helicase relax the coil or uh, statement two is topo isomerase type 1 cuts both strand option uh, statement three is topo isomerase type 2 cuts one strand then options are only two is correct two and three is correct one only or one two and three all three are correct so what is the correct answer regarding to uh, what which is the false you need to identify which which are the false statement about the dna topo isomerase two and three are false two and three are false okay very good now next question here in the above representation the coordinated metal ions in a rescue protein identify x y and z x here x here y and where is z is it z is somewhere here it is not represented so now your options are x is sulfur means this is sulfur atom from methionine Y is inorganic sulfur and Z is nitrogen sulfur from lysine. X is sulfur from cysteine. Y is inorganic sulfur. Z is nitrogen from histidine. X is sulfur from cysteine. Y is oxygen from aspartic acid. Z is nitrogen from histidine. X is sulfur from cysteine. Y is oxygen from aspartic acid. Z is oxygen from serine. What is the correct statement? Or oh, yeah. what are the X, Y, or Z? in this key protein b option b okay x is sulfur in cysteine this is very good then y is inorganic sulfur very good and z is nitrogen from histidine okay option b is correct now next question iron ion in the oxy form of hemoglobin has higher radius than the deoxy form is this correct statement or false oxy form iron ion in the oxy form of hemoglobin has higher radius than the deoxy form is it true or false not sure sir see uh, you can understand this by analogy also like in the hemoglobin when it is unbounded state so in the unbounded state 
the statement is re regarding where is the uh, yeah the statement is regarding the iron ion in the oxy form of hemoglobin has higher radius means in the bound state has the higher radius than the deoxy form if that is the case then more oxygen will come okay or the oxygen that is present there that will also have a chance to release from there because hemoglobin uh, have the less affinity than the myoglobin right so in that case uh, if oxy form oxy form of iron iron ion has the higher radius that will reduce the chances of sustaining it inside the like core so uh, so deoxy form will have the more higher radius than the oxy form so that the oxygen will not release from its binding state so this statement is false okay the reverse will be true okay understood yes sir so next question is the molecular motor responsible for muscle contraction is which which of this the dynein kinesin myosin or gyrase which among these all four are the motor proteins myosin is responsible specifically in muscle contraction myosin plays a role very good but uh, is gyrase a motor protein no okay. so correct answer is 19 c myosin Next question: Zn2 plus ion in alcohol dehydrogenase facilitates the deprotonation deprotonation of alcohol. Is it a true statement or false statement? This is actually a true statement. So now. the uh, with this we end the sample problem of the module 8 if you have any doubt regarding to module uh, module 8 or uh, regarding to any lecture you can ask me are there any doubts related to it or else i will move ahead with the uh, like uh, showing the animations are there any doubts no How many sir people are there only you are there okay so uh, let me show you the uh, animation video so here this is a like uh, uh, this was published by the uh, lab so a uh, foreign lab okay which is the university of utrecht and this is related to a uh, day of life like how motor proteins follows in the pathway how they transport the cargo from one end to another end and it has a very beautiful uh, like uh, like they have described it very beautifully and uh, so you can watch it please confirm whether you will be able you are able to get the sound or not sound is coming sound is coming no sir sound is not coming no now is it coming no sir Uh, how to notification video don't so mm, okay uh, then uh, uh, we'll just show you like this video if you are not getting voice i will explain how what is going on in this video right so this is talking about a brain like if this is talking about the human brain in the human brain the there are different different synapses and the like the linkages that you have uh, studied right so in that case when the one cargo from one cargo to another cargo if like from one 
portion of the brain to another portion if that one cargo has to deliver in that case the motor proteins such as kinin kinesin dynein and myosin these uh, play major role okay all three uh, all three do the job regarding to that so in the uh, here in this video it is talking about the complex network neural network of the brain so these are inside the neural network there will be uh, like uh, the different different like uh, motor uh, like microtubules related to microtubules will be there and which are analyzed which are uh, an, uh, the in the analogy they have represented those are the like road inside a city if this is a city then the road will be those uh, transport the uh, those road roads will represent the motor proteins like a uh, motor uh, like microtubules okay and the motor proteins which is represented here the this is a kinesin here so here they are receivers and all the these are all receivers of information these are transported by the different 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 motor protein so here it is uh, here this is nothing but a kinesin kinesin which have uh, which does the job to transport the cargo from one end to another end this is what they have explained now moving ahead now it, it has a limitation of time that it it has limitation or uh, with within the time they it has uh, it has to transport signal molecule or a cargo from the one center to another center so that this cell can process or the transmitter transmitter can access to the information okay so let's watch the video so here is the john and these are the microtubules and it is it is moving from one end to another end so here what they are saying this road is nothing but cytoskeleton and the traffic that is moving on the road are the motor proteins which is kinesin uh, kinesin then uh, dynein then myosin okay now what they are saying they are saying that uh, now this john which is a kinesin he has to transport this cargo which is on his head and then he can uh, he can walk only one direction like he cannot uh, if he choose to uh, if he choose to a, a particular direction then he can walk only in that direction okay and it cannot travel back okay so that is uh, before is starting he need to select which uh, road he must be taking so he is taking the main road now what they are saying they are saying for delivering a cargo like it is not a easy job for john which is a kinesin which means that he is not alone on this particular cargo protein other proteins other uh, motor proteins also attached to that cargo but uh, john has to transfer this particular cargo from one destination to its destination place right so that uh, to make the difficult like to make it soft challenging these two other proteins are there one this is the 
Well, another one was the kinesine, another kinesine, and this is a dynein. Dynein travels, a dynein uh, transfer cargo from in the opposite direction, right? So till now, these two motor proteins have not woken up, but they will waken up at the synapses. Synapses that will come in the later uh, video, later part of the video. So this is the axon initial segment, which is the center of the cell. Okay, from when it is passing through this, then the both of the like uh, both of the uh, motor protein that are attached to this particular cargo, they will also get activated at this axon initial segment. Okay, and from there they will do the kind of uh, fighting that in which direction this cargo will move. See, what is it, it is explaining here? This particular is a myosin. And in here, in this part of the video, they have said like the main road is microtubules and the branches are kinesin. Uh, branches are the, uh, the another part, like uh, actin filament. Okay. The branches are actin filament. So whenever the, at, whenever the this particular cargo protein is appearing to this junction where the kinesin where where the kinesin will uh, myosin will activate at the actin filament so that is why now here so this is the this is the second road which is branch branch is the uh, uh, the another part actin filament where the myosin will activate so see how it is challenging the job of uh, john So now what they are saying, they are saying that the uh, now John have to apply the brute force. So in that case, the force that have the like, which protein will have the higher energy, they will get the chance to travel in which direction the cargo will move. So in that case, John has taken over and then he continues to travel on the main road. That was his first obstacle when the myosin get activated. Now the second obstacle will be here. So this is a tug of war where the uh, now the dynein has been activated and, and the dynein will always walk in the opposite direction of uh, the kinesin, uh, act, uh, opposite direction of the John kinesin, right? So, so see.
So here the research perspective in this kinesin and motor protein line, which I wanted to discuss with you all. Like here, what they have discussed till now, now right now, when the it it uh, get the like when it wins the war with the dynein, then the cargo transport to the uh, part where the synapses like synapses lies. So around the synapses, there are many regulatory protein which can be interpreted as a traffic police. So that traffic police will tell whether the particular cargo will be going to which direction. And if uh, it is in the favor of uh, kinesin, then it will transport to the uh, that particular direction. And that not only the same thing that uh, the, that is that not only the only challenge there. So the another challenge are there, such as the the road which is the kinesin is traveling. Which is the microtubules that are very dynamic. They are constantly being under construction or they are under de the degradation. There are so many processes going on, which means the road is not very uh, kind of uh, constant. Like they are in very dynamic condition. So in that scenario, what will happen? The it will block the pathway. Like it will block. It will block the uh, move, movement of the kinase. And that hampers the uh, signaling transport, uh, signaling mechanism that that may cause the brain disease, right? So to know whether this particular cargo is being transported and you, using which mechanism is it being transported, these kind of studies can help us to understand how to treat brain disease or certain different diseases which appears due to the impro like a improper cargo transport. So. That is why the studying the kinesin motor, uh, that is why the uh, studying the motor, uh, the role of motor proteins and the functioning of that, that will help the, uh, to treat the virulent disease and other diseases. That is what they were discussing. And at the end, at the end, this will finally reach to the, uh, the kinesin will finally reach to their destination. Okay, so this is how. And this is not alone kinesin that is acting in our brain cell. There are many more uh, kinesins are there, which have been just started here. Okay. This is was the first video was there. The second video that I want to show you is the DNA animation, like how the cell grows. So in this, you won't find much difficulty because uh, there are many like uh, if you are not able to hear the voice, uh, I will. Like uh, they have given the marker in that. So you will be able to see, identify. This is a nucleus. These are the gene library. Gene library means the DNA, right? Double X is our DNA. This is a transcription process where the RNA polymerase is uh, transcribing the DNA. And it is the nucleus gateway. Nucleus gateway means there are certain nucleoporin channels from which the enzymes or other substrate can transport to the exterior to interior. This is the DNA in unfolded state. Like it is 1.8 meters in particular one D, uh, one cell. So now what has attached here? These are nothing but the histone protein, which helps the DNA to fold in its proper shape. See how it is being organized using the histone when it is binding to the histone proteins. Now it will fold in many folded way, and then they finally will be folded in the structure of chromosome. See. Now it is folded into the chromosomal structure, and here the 
role of kinesin and dynein appears which are the motor proteins that help in the cell division this is a dividing cell where the chromosome is being separated and one cell is converted into the two daughter cells this happens in the all our cells while duplication this is dna replication process where the different different factors are coming and bind see how beautifully they does the job in very precise manner that is happening in our body constantly this is the bone strengthening how it is happening this protein is rna polymerase which is transcribing the dna to rna this is the real speed of transcription this how fast it is happening these are the epigenetic regulation so this was about the how it is transporting now the next thing i wanted i want to show you is this video
a network of uh, different different motor protein like microtubules and kinesin. See how beautiful it is. This is the formation of microtubules. How the road is being constructed. And the molecule attached and it get degraded now. This is the microtubule. Alpha tubules, alpha and beta tubules are being polymerized, and this is depolymerization of the microtubules. Now this is the transportation using uh, the kinesin and kinesin, myosin, and dynein. This is the nucleus, and from nucleus, the different different uh, part of the these are the different different synthesized uh, synthesized molecules. This is the DNA. See how the protein is being folded and being transported to the Golgi apparatus. This is RER. And how the kinesin and these all are delivering the cargo to uh, this uh, Golgi apparatus for the post modification. So these were the animation that I wanted to show you. I hope you liked it. So this was kind of a representation, whatever you have studied in the module eight. So I I I thought uh, visualizing this will be very much helpful for you all to understand this in very clear way. OK, so uh, are there any question? No, sir. But so did you like the video? Uh, how was it? Yeah, it was very interesting. OK, I will share the link. Uh, okay. This this all three video link in the my email when I will be posting this video in the YouTube also and when in the group like uh, discussion forum from there also you can access and uh, uh, in that case, I think you will be able to hear the voice of the video. OK, sir. OK, so uh, by this we are now uh, and now we are reaching to the end of this discussion session. So if there are any, any question, further question, you can guide them to my email ID or you can unmute yourself and ask me right now. Okay, or you can also paste in the discussion forum. Uh, thank you so much for joining. I hope uh, you are enjoying the session and the course also. So if there are any question, you can always free to feel free to ask. OK. Then thank you. Thank you, sir. Ranjit, are, uh, uh, is there any question, Ranjit? No, sir. OK. OK, then thank you so much for joining. Uh, happy learning. Bye bye.